Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Sullivan here. Today we're going to be talking about rearranging formulas and a lot of times these are called literal equations. There's not as many numbers involved in these equations, lots of times just letters, but it's all right. We're going to do them very similar to how we've solved all the other equations, all right? Um, one aside, recently this just happened. This is what drives me crazy about English. Why, why am I a math teacher? There's an answer, right? English teachers, definition of literal literally used to mean exactly what it meant like if i it was literally tuesday it had to be tuesday i couldn't be on monday and say oh it is like literally tuesday and be okay with it it would not work all right or like um that guy is so talented he's literally like the best rapper ever well no i'm sorry guys um that kid in your class is not literally the best rapper ever. He is probably pretty terrible. I've heard a lot of these kids in my class, all right? And that's what it used to mean. And then like a year or two ago, and I'm not lying, a year or two ago, guess what? They have now defined literally as using it in an exaggerated way because so many people use it wrong and so many people use it this way, now literally means figuratively, all right? It'd be like saying this. Now, Mr. Kelly is literally the coolest guy I know. And this is Mr. Kelly. He's being interviewed. This is just a random in the middle of the street in London. We're walking around, and he gets interviewed. Look how cool he is, all right? He is literally the coolest guy I know. Well, that's definitely not true, all right? So let's take a look here. So let's review real quick solving equations. So the first thing I want to talk about is... I know that by now you probably remember how to do these and you don't necessarily need to write GEMDAS down. I'm going to do it for a very specific reason, all right? I want to get my X by itself. So what's bothering it? I have a multiply and I have a subtraction. And remember when we solve equations, we solve backwards. So the opposite of minus 6 is plus 6. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. Now the great thing here, 10 plus 6, I can combine those. They're like terms, all right? Um, then I have the opposite of multiply, which is divide. So I'm going to divide both by 2. So x equals 8. And we have an answer. Awesome. All right, so we want to get x by itself here. We're solving for x. Let's see if anything's different. Let's see what we have. What operations do we have? We are multiplying a by x, so we're multiplying. We're subtracting b, yes. Now, I totally get it. Those aren't numbers. And it's a little weird, right? But... Is anything going to change? Let's take a look. What's the opposite of subtracting B? The opposite of subtracting B is adding B. All right, great. So now I'm left with AX because these cancel equals. Now, are these like terms? Are they the exact same variable? No. So I can't combine them. So I'm just going to write C plus B. All right. Now, what is the opposite of multiplying? The opposite of multiplying is dividing. Now, I divided this whole side, so I have to divide this whole side by A. If you think about it, this C plus B is grouped. It's already over there, so I have to divide every single thing over there, all right? So now this is X. Now, now then, I look here. Can I divide these? No, they're all, there's, there's no numbers, so I'm, that's my answer. C plus B over A. It's the exact same problem. Is there any difference in how we solve those? If there's any difference, I mean any difference at all, the biggest difference is that I didn't have to actually simplify or perform any multiplication or computation. Some of you guys do all the steps right, and then you make a small mistake by adding or subtracting wrong. All right, check it out. We're still working on literal equations, like saying Mr. Brust literally wears the longest pants ever. Well, that's obviously an exaggeration. It's figuratively. But we all know his pants don't even cover his ankles because he wears those man pre's, right? All right. So let's check this one. Now wants us to solve for A. So the one thing I would definitely tell you to do is I want you to circle the variable that you're solving for, all right? And if you need to, especially when you first start these, again, write it out. So what is happening to A? I'm multiplying by X and I'm subtracting B. All right, let's do it. The opposite of minus B is plus B. Why do I do that first? Because I'm undoing the orders of operation. So now I have AX equals C plus B, right? 
Simple. Now I want to get a by itself, so the opposite of multiplying by x is dividing x. So again, these are grouped, right? Everything on this side is divided by x, so everything on this side is divided by x. And what we have here then is a is equal to c plus b over x. So this is kind of cool because now we can solve for anything in our variables, right? We have it solved for c already. We could solve it for b. It wouldn't be any harder, would it? All right? Um, how is this different than other equations, other solutions? Well, this gives us a myriad of, of possible answers. Maybe we have a formula, and we'll do one in just a second. It's pretty famous. And if we solve it for A, we can plug in values for C, B, and X, and it'll be much easier to do. All right? Remember, variables are just placeholders. All right? They're, they're placeholders for numbers, so we can solve them the same way. Set it up. Get the variable we want to solve for by itself, and we're done. Let's take a look at these. The area of a triangle, solve for B. All right, so I'm going to solve for B. So I have this right here. B is right there. Oh, now this one's kind of tricky, isn't it? All right. I have multiply by a half and multiply by H. Ooh, two multiplies. Now, once you get good at this, you can probably do this in one step, all right? The first thing I'm going to do is the opposite of multiply by a half. Remember, the opposite of multiplying is dividing, right? And when I divide by a fraction, I am essentially multiplying by the reciprocal. So if I multiply by the reciprocal on this side, these cancel. So now I have 2 over 1, which is just 2, 2 times A. So 2 times the area of a triangle equals B times H. Now I want to get the B by itself. How is H bothering it? It's multiplying. So I want to divide. So now I have B equals 2a over h. All right? All right, let's try this one. I want you to actually pause the video and try this one for yourself. All right, now I'm going to give you a hint. Which one of these do we have that we haven't had yet? Grouping. We have grouping. What is this? Two times. So we have multiplication and grouping. So right now, pause the video and try it for yourself. Let's see how you did. So the first thing I did was I circled L because that's what I want to get by itself, right? And I have grouping. This is grouped by the parentheses and I have multiplication. So the first thing I did was I divided by 2. All right, I divided both sides by 2 and I got P over 2 equaled L plus W. Now my grouping is gone and what do I have? I have addition, the opposite of adding W is subtracting. Now I have to, this whole thing, P over 2, that whole thing is getting subtracted by W, so P over 2 minus W. All right, let's try another one. All right, so this is a interest formula, all right? So let's solve this interest formula for T. So let's take a look. I'm going to start with GEMDAS, and we have T right here. I have grouping, don't I? And I have multiplication. Ooh, this is similar to the last one. Let's start this one out. So I have A equals P times 1 plus RT. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, divide both sides by this capital P. So now I have A over P equals 1 plus RT. All right. So now I have some more stuff. I'm going to rewrite GEMDAS again because I still have other things on here. I have a 1, so I'm adding 1. And I have an R, which is being multiplied. So I need to work backwards, so I'm going to do subtract 1. So minus 1 from both sides. So now I have A over P minus 1 equals RT. All right. Scroll up a little bit here. Now I have to get rid of my multiplication. I want to solve for T, so I need to divide by R. And I'm going to divide this whole thing by R. So now this is going to be A over P minus 1 over r. And right now, totally okay with that. I know that's like a fraction within a fraction, but it's all right. No problems there, okay? So I want you to right now solve this one for p. Take it on your own and solve for p, all right? Don't overthink it. All right, so when I solve for p, here's p right here, all right? I noticed I had p times all of this. Does it matter what all of this is? No. I'm multiplying, right? 
I am multiplying. I have grouping, but I'm really just multiplying. So what is the opposite of multiplying? It's dividing. So I took what I was multiplying. I know it's a whole lot of stuff, but it doesn't matter. And I divide both sides by that. Anything divided by itself equals 1, so it cancels out. So over here, everything is on the bottom. One step, a over 1 plus rt equals p. I know that looks so ridiculously hard because I'm, but just don't overthink it. What am I doing? What is happening to p? It's being multiplied. What is the opposite of multiplying? Divide. Don't overthink it, all right? So what I want you to do right now is pause the video, try these. So we're going to solve the same equation. One time we're going to solve for y, and one time we're going to solve for x. Let's take a look here. Over here, I want to solve for y. So I had 3x. That whole thing was adding. All right, this negative 4 was multiplying. So when I solve them backwards, I need to do the opposite of adding and the opposite of multiply. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. Those are not like terms. I cannot actually combine those. I had to leave them. The opposite of multiplying by negative 4 is divided by negative 4. Now, this technically is a correct answer, all right? But anytime we can, we should simplify. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. Negative 3 divided by 4 is a positive 3, 4, 6. All right, let's come over here. I'm going to circle what I want, x. So what is the 3 doing to that? It is multiplying. What is 4y doing? It is subtracting. So I'm going to go backwards. The opposite of subtracting 4y is adding 4y. So now we have 3x equals negative 12 plus 4y. And I can't add those together because they're not like terms. The opposite of multiply by 3 is divide by 3. I need to look here and see if I can simplify these. I can simplify this one for sure, so we should simplify this. Negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. All right? Uh, 4 divided by 3 cannot be simplified, but I can leave it as a fraction of 4 thirds. Why? And there we go. There you have it. Go out in the world and be the change that you'd like to see. Be great, people.